guys. Welcome back. We're doing another comic book review today, and this time we're talking about Uncanny X-Men 19. Now, obviously, this is the new series. This issue comes out in a couple weeks, and this is a tie-in for Avengers vs. X-Men. Now, normally I don't read a lot of the tie-ins. I have not read an X-Book faithfully in several years. Uh, but I figured to go back now with Avengers vs. X-Men, especially now that it's wrapping up, I've been picking up some of those crossover books, the Avengers, New Avengers, some of the X-Men stuff, reading that. And I got the opportunity to read this book that comes out in a couple weeks and ties into the ending of Avengers vs. X-Men. Now, I'm going to try to not really give away too many spoilers. But there's probably going to be one or two in here, so you guys can just... If you don't want any spoilers, you don't want any tampering with your knowledge of future events or the storylines, then just go ahead log off now. And for the rest of you, I'm going to say right now that if you've been reading the X-Men books, you're going to want to read this. If you have not, do you need to pick this up to flesh out the story? No, you really don't. But this is going uh, to be a Scott-centric issue. This is Everything's about Scott and his storyline from beginning to end. One of the things that happens in Avengers vs. X-Men is, of course, he takes all of the Phoenix powers into himself, and then he turns into Dark Phoenix uh, himself, and the Avengers have to bring him down. Now, I'm not going to spoil exactly how it happens and all the stuff that happens in Avengers vs. X-Men 12 and, and the legacy that it's going to leave on the Marvel Universe, which actually is kind of important, uh, but I will say this. When Avengers vs. X-Men started, the very first issue, my first thought was, why is Scott being such a dill hole? I mean, he was such um, a meathead through this entire thing. It didn't really make any sense. Uh, and this, I think, does a, uh, an okay job of kind of explaining that a little bit, what his motivations really were, uh, why he was so intent on um, using the Phoenix power, having the Phoenix power there, protecting hope, keeping hope as part of the X-Men. Um, and in the end, because of some of the things that happens in Avengers vs. X-Men, he's very remorseful about what happened with uh, Professor X, because Professor X is dead, and that sucks, and he never wanted that to happen, obviously. Um, but he, uh, he does kind of recognize that because of some of the other things that happened in Avengers vs. X-Men, um, he thinks it was worth the fight. He thinks that the uh, 12 issues of battles and the people who've fallen along the way make it all worthwhile. So if you want to know like what makes it worthwhile for Scott to basically turn his back on humanity, get corrupted by the Dark Phoenix, and to kill Professor X, well, that's your motivation for reading Avengers vs. X-Men 12. And if you want a little bit more follow-up on Scott, because quite honestly... In books like Avengers vs. X-Men, it kind of skips over a lot of stuff to more quickly kind of get through the story. You see a little bit more of the Avengers side of things, and then the battle, and then the aftermath. This gives you more of Scott's side of things, and how the Phoenix power kind of warps his perception, warps his ability to cope, and then, <coughs> excuse me, um, how he deals with some of the aftermath of what actually happened in the storyline. So, it fleshes out the story pretty well, and it is a good complement to reading number 12. But if you just read 12 and you never read this one, are you really missing out on anything? Probably not. But if you're a big X-Men fan and you're going to be reading the X-Books going forward, then Uncanny X-Men 19 is a book you're going to want to get your hands on. And let's face it, if you've been reading Avengers vs. X-Men and you've been reading all the tie-ins, you're just going to keep on reading this one at all. But I'd say this is a pretty good counterpoint to 12. And uh, if you have been reading Avengers vs. X-Men and you've been picking up some of the crossover books here and there, go ahead and pick this one up. I think you'll enjoy seeing the other side of the story. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for me today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.